everyone. Uh, this is the third video of Module 2, which is also the last. And I want to talk in this lecture about aging gender trends in society. And so we're going to look at diagrams called age sex diagrams or population pyramids. Um, and they're specific to a nation or a region. And they describe um, the, the breakdown of the population in terms of gender and age groups. And so I, I want to use those then to briefly look at how high birth rates and high infant mortality might change the population over time, or conversely, how low birth rates would change that population over time. So these age sex distributions, population pyramids, they show us the size of a population by the age group. And so my sample here is to, from Canada in 2014. So each of those age groups are five-year cohorts, five-year five year groups, and males are on the left, females are on the right. And you can see that kind of the largest group in society is around in the 50s, um, in, their, in, in their 50s. Um, there are not quite as many young children as there are adults in the population. Notice how it, the, the bars are a little skinnier near the bottom. Uh, and also, right at the very top, it totally makes sense that there are very few people over 100 years old. So there are features of this graphic um, that make total sense to you, I, I hope. Um, from the 50s up to 100 years old, people die off fairly quickly, unfortunately. Um, you might be surprised that Canada's younger population is smaller in size than some of the older age groups. Um, and then um, the x-axis at the very bottom is, uh, in this case, between millions of people. And, and these graphics will always tell you kind of the size of that x-axis. Um, so Canada up to, up to 1.4 million people in some of those age groups. So to understand these, you can kind of approach them from a top down or a bottom up in one of those ways. And so if you if you start at the top, just kind of think that, okay, oldest people are at the top, so they're very few. And as you get younger from there, more people are surviving. There are more people in those age groups. And then you go to the bottom. So there are, there are a certain number of newborns, uh, zero to five year olds, sorry, zero to four year olds in there. Uh, you could also start at the bottom, bottom and look at the newborns first, the young children first, and kind of move up from there. So it's really whichever you find personally to be the most useful. Uh, I've included uh, a link to census.gov slash pop clock. I had mentioned, I have mentioned this website in the past. Uh, and if you go to the website, which I would like you to do, you'll find this age sex diagram for the United States on that main page. And right underneath the diagram itself, there's this slider and in my my screenshot here, it's showing 2015 as the end of that time scale. So you can actually move the slider from the year 2000 to 2015 and back and forth and back and forth. And you can actually see how the diagram changes every year based on changes in society. And so I'd like you to look at that, um, but I'm not gonna kind of record that website in this video. So I'm gonna show you something a little different animate all over here. So I used Excel to generate a kind of a simulation of population over time. And I have two versions of this and I'm going to click through a bunch of slides back and forth. Uh, in one of those simulations, I modeled a 5% decrease every five years in the size of that age group. So you're going to see the age group as time goes on get smaller, the youngest age group. It's going to get smaller and smaller and smaller every single time, every single every time five years goes by. So I started just 1965, just kind of pick things. And let me skip forward through these slides and just focus on the zero to four year olds. Look at the bottom most bar and you'll see as time goes on five years, one, five, five, as we continue moving forward, that that bottom bar gets narrower and narrower and narrower because the birth rate is low or it's decreasing 
and the number of children in each five-year groups becomes less and less and less over time. So the overall graphic is shrinking. So the population in total is shrinking over time. And we actually see that in this graph where I just kind of tallied up the total population in this simulation. And so we start at 1965 and it's around 1.2 million and over time it just drops and drops and drops and that's what I'm trying to show you. So let me go back. It's 65, okay. Another thing just to kind of keep your eye on and I'll scoot through these again. Look on the female side, right hand side, up in the, the 55 to 64 year old bars. There's this um, double bar just kind of sticking out there. So to help you, again, understand how these graphics kind of change over time, as I click forward, watch how that kind of double population boom, whatever you want to call that, watch how that just shifts up into the older age groups. And it gets smaller each time because people die off naturally. Um, but there's you can still kind of make out that bulge up there. And um, later on in this presentation, I'm going to point out some baby boom, like the baby boomer bulge in the United States graph. And you can kind of see these things. So you can look for these bulges and see periods in history where you have a lot of a certain age group. Okay, so um, eventually that totally disappeared because all those people died off. Okay, so I have one more simulation, same Excel file. This time I'm looking at a 2% increase in birth rate every five years. So there's that bulge again on the female side, 55 to 64 year old. Um, but this time again, look at the bottom most bar, the zero to four year olds. And every time I click forward, rather than shrinking, it's gonna grow, it's gonna kind of bulge out here. So it gets bigger, that bottom bar is getting bigger every five years, getting wider, getting wider. And so in this case, it, this fictional society over, uh, over a bunch of decades because the birth rate is increasing every five years, the, the, the pyramid takes on kind of this bulgy pyramid shape. And um, it, before I go there, sorry, um, let me come back to the, the, the shape of the graphic. Uh, I just want, so I have my, my total population change over time graphic again, where I tallied everything up in Excel. And in this one, it's actually kind of funny because your population, even though I'm modeling a 2% population gain every five years, overall, for a while, the population continues going down. We had a lot of older people in my simulation and they get older and older and they start dying off. So there's actually kind of this downward momentum for 20 years, 65 to 85 where the population keeps going down, even though that bottom most bar kept growing outward, but there was a momentum downward before it picked back up. And this idea of population momentum is pretty important because for governments, if they wanna try and manipulate their population size, they might implement some kind of policy. Um, China tried, China did this for many years. They implemented a one child policy and that policy might state that each family can only have one child. That kind of works to an extent, but it takes maybe decades to actually see the effects of that policy because there is a momentum, because you already have a hundred years worth of people living who are already kind of in these different age groups um, getting older and older and older. So when a, when a government uh, policymaker looks at population over time, they, they do keep this population momentum idea in place because it takes a while for changes to be observed in the population size. Okay, so um, there are some pretty useful kind of general trends that you can look at in these population pyramids. And a lot of that comes from just looking at three different groups of citizens within that pyramid that are represented in that pyramid. So we can split it up into three different groups. Um, the children at the very bottom, uh, usually somewhere around zero to 16 years old, they probably, they probably don't work. 
they don't really contribute significantly to the economic growth of a society. And for the most part, they don't yet reproduce. So they are, in a way, I'm not saying this in a bad way, but in a way, they are a drain on society. They don't contribute economically, at least, but they do use up resources. Then you have kind of this worker age, um, around 16 to maybe 60, 65 years old. And these are the, the people in society, kind of the bulk of the people in society who are working. They are creating goods, they're providing services, um, they're having children, they're buying things, they're selling things. Um, this is the large part of a society that contributes economically. And at the very top, you have the elders, those who are quite possibly retired. Maybe they're not contributing much economically anymore. And um, maybe they're becoming kind of a, a drain on society again. And uh, again, not in a bad way, but they require more health care. Um, I mean, they're starting to die off in larger numbers. So, um, I mean, there's a cost to that. You know, funerals and, and grave sites. And as you get, as, as that part of society gets older, it, it costs society money. Okay, so um, zoomed in just a little bit. This is 2011 Canada. I, I'm not particularly choosing Canada for any one reason. It was a good graphic to kind of make my point here. Um, so that's where I went. So children at the bottom, working age, a big chunk of the working age is in the middle, elders at the top. So besides breaking down these graphics into these different parts, we can also look at the general shape of the diagram and it tells us a lot about the society and its birth rates. So if the society generally has this kind of pure middle, we, we find that the birth rate is high, uh, just like that second simulation I showed you. There are a lot of children at the bottom of the, of the pyramid, but maybe the people are dying off very quickly. So there are a lot of young people but very few older people. P uh, stable populations might have relatively straight sides. I mean, they have to come to, everybody dies eventually, so there's always gonna be a point at the top. But if your sides are roughly straight up and down, then you have a pretty stable population. You have about the same number of children being born every year, every five years, and, and so, the total size of each five-year group of citizens stays about the same. And then you can actually have an inverted pyramid where, just like my first simulation, the low levels of that pyramid are pretty narrow, but maybe decades in the past, you had higher birth rates. So there are a lot more of like middle-aged people or even past middle age. So those are kind of three really, really simple versions of that graph. And as a society develops, we can actually track and see these changes over time. Um, think of it as the development from being a third world country, where in, a, where in, in poor countries, third world countries, the birth rate is really high, the mortality rate young, the early mortality rate is very high, people die young. Um, and as that country industrializes and becomes more of a first world nation, the birth rate drops. We talked about that in the previous video. And so you end up kind of shifting your society's population pyramid from one shape to another. And there are actually four stages that we can look at, gen generalized stages. Um, stage one is kind of this triangular one where you have a lot of children, but they die off quickly. Um, high birth rate. Um, high mortality rates at under, younger ages. Sorry, by the way, um, mortality, death. So mortality rate is kind of a fancy way of saying death rate. Um, there's a rapid decrease in each age group as you go up the pyramid because the people are dying so young. There's a short life expectancy on average because people are tending to die young. And we do see this um, trend in the poorest countries with rampant, rampant poverty around as time goes on, the society be, uh, continues to expand. It, maybe it, it, its economy gets better. Its environmental conditions become better. And the population begins to stabilize. So 
the shape is not so much this um, really bowed in like concave pyramid. It's it's kind of pushing out. So it's beginning to stabilize. And so it's, there's still a high death rate. Um, the death rate is decreasing, though life expectancy is increasing a little bit. And this is this 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 like perfect triangular pyramid. It, it, it's a it's a transition between previous slides. So stage one with really high infant mortality to stage three. So in stage three, we find that um, the younger generations are kind of stabilizing in size. You have more or less roughly the same number of children being born every year. And, you know, naturally, there's always going to be a, some death at all ages. I mean, you can't stop death. So those lines are, in my graphic there, the lines are tilted in just a little bit because there's always going to be some number of people dying at all ages. But those lines are pretty steep. So um, death rate is low until you get pretty old and then, and then there's no choice. So there are a lot of people living to old age and maybe up around 70, 80, 90 years old is when many of them start to die off. So this is considered to be a stationary, sorry, so a stationary population. And then we go to the stage four, which is a shrinking or a contracting population where even though up high, above the 15 year old group in this graphic, you still have these fairly straight sides kind of coming to a peak up the top. Look at the below 15, everything's starting to contract. It's starting to shrink in. So this is where birth rate is low, um, kind of like one of my simulations. Um, death rate is low. People are living longer. Um, and this is kind of like, this is kind of the end of the trend that we have observed for hundreds of years, a couple hundred years, where industrialized countries have really have fairly low birth rates. And we, I showed you some numbers, um, some fertility um, numbers on the previous presentation, where the most, in, some of the industrialized countries have fertility rates that are below two. And that's because after a certain point, the trend is to have fewer children per mother and eventually that shows up on the overall population pyramid. So stages one and two, just to kind of summarize these, these trends, stages one and two have high birth rates and high mortality rates. And um, those effects are very straining on a society. It takes a lot to, a, a lot of people being born, a lot of people dying, um, great need for healthcare, which is probably not there. So it's a strain on the country. Um, the people who live there probably have very low incomes. Um, and because unemployment is probably really high and or income is really low, there are not all that many people who can even pay into any kind of social safety net. Like, like in the United States, we have social security. Uh, and these people don't really have the means to pay taxes. So it, it's another vicious cycle. Um, if you remember the poverty cycle, it's a vicious cycle. It's kind of perpetuated. In this way, um, the cycle, this type of a cycle is kind of similar. Okay, so, um, and then stage three, which is ideal, sees um, a sufficient number of adults working and contributing to society, contributing tax money, uh, and so on, and um, that those tax dollars help maintain a quality healthcare system. And then uh, when death does occur, it's later in life, and um, there are enough of working age to support the retirees and, and, and as they die off. And then stage four, and this is actually kind of where China was going to an extent, which caused them a lot of problems, is if you don't have enough children being born and you don't have enough of those young people moving into the workforce, you're going to end up with a lot of retirees and not a lot of workers to support the system. And that actually becomes uh, quite a big problem. There, there's China. Um, so it is possible to see rapid changes in a society over time. 
and this has been seen in certain countries where industrialization happens very quickly, and we see very fast changes in birth rates and death rates uh, over time. And this we've seen in Brazil, uh, where for it's, it is still a third world country, but it is industrializing very quickly. And so look at the bottom 15 years or so of this graphic, and the bottoms are kind of pulling in very quickly here. So birth rate is dropping fairly quickly in Brazil, which is, to an extent, it's good for them, although their government might be concerned that their population is going to contract too quickly. So um, I'm not quite sure where, where their government feels about this, how their government feels about this, but um, it's one thing they have to deal with. So uh, I just pointed out here, so at the top of the graph, from around your, the, the 30 year olds, those lines kind of pull in very quickly. So the death rate among 30 year olds and older is fairly high. But then from, you know, 30 year olds and younger, the death rate is lower and the birth rate is lower as well. And so that's a good thing over. Okay, one more, I think it's one more example. Um, we can look at the United States now. And so population of the United States, so again, male left, female right. Uh, and this was, this is recent. I think this was 2017, maybe it was 2015 or so. And so, yeah, we, we pointed out the males. Um, so we have this bulge here on the left. It's also on the right, but I drew my little line here on the left. So the people uh, around 50 to 70 years old. I'm gonna pause for a second. So you know the name of that kind of bulge in population, that large group of a certain age group. So those are the baby boomers. We also have this age group down here. Um, the bulge runs from around 20 to the 39 year olds. I barely fit into this group. I'm kind of at the top end of this bulge here. Um, but this bulge are the millennials. So right now the United States actually has two booms in population. One followed World War II. Those are the baby boomers. And then the other is the millennials, which I forget why the millennials are a bulge in population. But we can actually see that in the graph. Um, all right. So in this module, I have an assignment for you. You can download it. I want you to um, follow the instructions. You're going to look up a few different population pyramids. Uh, these population pyramids have some unique features. And I want you to figure out what's going on. Uh, they're fairly obvious uh, if you do some quick searching online. But they're kind of really unique examples showing you how you can, you can observe what's going on in the society just based on some feature of that population pyramid. So uh, in summary, we have, so the, uh, the age sex diagrams illustrate the, the distribution of various age groups in society, and they do allow us to analyze the trends in mortality